this is the neck bearing of Lovecott Mill. This is going to be set into the bed stone and the stone spindle will pass through it. Now what's happened in the last couple of months is that the wood has shrunk and where it was very tight in the neck of in the square of the bed stone it's now relatively loose so we're going to glue it in and i'm going to put in a phosphor bronze bush in here because it's also shrunk onto the shaft now i've honed the shaft out to a little over 50 millimeters and i've made this cutter that fly cutter that is on a 50 millimeter piece of bar and I'm going to cut down to a shoulder and then probably turn it over and cut away from the other side I'm not too sure about that yet but this is how it's uh, cutting anyway I tried doing it by hand, but it um, the cutter bites into the wood, so I'm doing it on this slow speed pillar drill. The phosphor bronze that I've arranged is just under 70 millimeters, so I mustn't cut a hole that's too big. But uh, this, by measuring it with the inside calipers, I'm at 61 point something. It doesn't matter what the actual dimension is because the bush can be made according to the ball. I've calculated that the or would be about 62 but there's a little bit of clearance for the bar in the hole here which I honed out after I realized that the stone spindle wouldn't turn in it so it's actually slightly smaller than the 62 that I calculated I'm going to go down about 40 millimeters I think. This recess here is for a grease, an ordinary neoprene seal so that any grease that does, that is on the bush itself won't come out onto the flower. Once I've done this, I must do the same on the round neck bearing of La Motte's water mill, where that completely shrunk onto the shaft, and that's a 40 millimeter shaft. But there I've got to put the bush in the bottom because there's a lot of wear on the actual stone spindle up towards the top so if the bush is down here it'll be on a original diameter which is 40 millimeters so i can't use this tool again unfortunately the wood is iron wood certainly making a nice smooth ball for the bush to lie in and it'll probably shrink some more onto the bush and I might ask them to mill the outside of the bush a little bit also so it really grips
actually going better than I thought. I'm going to stop and measure now. How deep I've got. I'm at 22, so I still want to go down quite a little bit more. Okay, I've got down to 28 millimeters. It's going better, very well. And it's giving me a lovely finish on the ball. I'm really, really pleased with it. I think I'll stop at about 35. I think what I'll do is the, the stone spindle needs to be able to move very slightly to make sure it's standing absolutely perpendicular to the bedstone. So that's really why I need a clearance on the underneath. But I still want to leave myself a shoulder for the uh, bush to lie on, although I think that the bush is going to, the wood is going to pinch onto the wood. And then the piece in the middle, I'll... I've got a bore now here of a vernier size of about 61.5, 61.53. Uh, which is fine. The depth is just over 30, which is also fine, 31. And now there I've got a shoulder for the bush to stand on, but I still want clearance for the stone spindle to be able to rock very, very slightly. And I said this step is for a neoprene seal. If I'm clever, I'll turn it over and I'll do the same on the bottom. Maybe, but then to a standard bearing size, so a seal size. So 62 would be a good idea. Um, 50, 62 would be a standard seal size. Uh, and then the section between the what I leave behind as a shoulder for the bush, I will then hone with a pipe which I've got. I think it's a 40 millimeter galvanized iron pipe with a piece of with a slot in it and a piece of sandpaper wrapped around it. And I can ride up and down until I'm really happy that there's no chance in the future of the the wood shrinking. You can see there's actually quite a lot of play already here of it shrinking onto the stone spindle in the future. So really, yes, let me um, turn it over and it doesn't need to be all that tight and then work from the other side. also centralizes itself so there's no particular need for it to be absolutely perpendicular. There's not much play there, that's fine. So I need to then set the tool out a very very tiny little bit to get to 62. If I don't hit 62 then I'll have to go to a bigger size, uh, to uh, a seal size and then go probably down to about here somewhere until I know that I've got clearance for the uh, the stone spindle to rock. I might even ask the... I'm not going to turn the bush myself. I might ask them to give the bush ever such a slight uh, hourglass shape so that I know that there's no chance of it jamming up the stone spindle. I just need to know that it's held vertical, perpendicular to the bedstone and 
that it's not going to wobble at all. Switch on. I've set the fly cutter out a tiny bit. It was reading on the vernier 6.6, it's now reading 7. I'll be very lucky if I land up exactly on 62. But I'll do a little bit of a cut first and then see what happens. Do a measurement. I'm going to... What I'll do is then I'll drill here, perhaps diagonally through to the space that I've got then between this seal and the other one to be able to put a grease nipple in there and to be able to force grease into this pocket so that at least some of it, the, the phosphor bronze isn't going to need much but, but at least if it's got then it should last a long time. I'm going to have to go a little way in first before I've got a surface to measure. How about that? That'll do. More by luck than good judgment, but anyway, 61.92, that's close enough to 62. So I'm going to go right down as far as I can and, uh, and then leave this small amount here to hone out. Because at a certain stage, I'm going to lose the guiding effect of the cutting tool. I'm going along. I think what I might do now is just to stop here and also leave a shoulder for the seal to stand against and set the tool now smaller and then go uh, give more clearance. Below this, so 
that looks like about 10 millimeters I'm sure I can get a 60 to 50 62 12 so that's fine okay so now I can set the tool considerably in there remember this is the radius so what I'm not taking off one side I'm not taking off the other side let's try that what this bar is, just so long as it gives me a good clearance. stop when I'm level here and then measure how much is left uncut. measured the shoulder just now between what I'd bought from one side to what I'd bought from this side and there was 116 and I decided I'm going to leave let's see I'm going to have to tighten the chuck all three drawers I'm going to leave 50 
uncut that I'll hone. So I've got to go down here 66 around there. It doesn't, I also reduced the, brought the tool in further so the cut is less. So I have to bring the table up because I'm going to run out of reach here. The finish on this bore is not as good as it was at the top. It doesn't matter, it's really just a, a grease pocket here. a long way to go. You can probably see the step I've left there for the grease seal to lie against so that it's nice and square. I also checked that the tool isn't going to bottom out on the on the screw of the uh, the chuck here, the uh, vice. It also doesn't really matter where the grease hole comes out, so long as it's in this pocket between the bearing which is going to be about here the bush and uh, and the bottom seal this originally I, it did worry me the whole time how I was going to be able to tilt the stone spindle if I had to and that is done by moving the foot bearing of the stone spindle in a box with four screws guiding effect when it when that shoulder that's uncut gets less and less. I 
Z66. So this is the hone I made. Uh, it's simply a piece of 40 millimeter, inch and a half galvanized pipe with a bolt through this end and an eye bolt, and a piece of sandpaper, a piece of belt sander actually there. I've got uh, 55 millimeters still left there that is uncut. So we'll try I, and see what happens. I think I'll just tighten that. It's certainly taken material out there, but what I'm going to do now is to put a second piece of sandpaper into there on top of the other one. And that should have the effect of, or maybe, no, what I'll do is I'll wrap a piece right around and see what happens. It's just got a slot there. Maybe with a bit of an overlap here. Let's see whether that will go in. Yes, it will. Let's see what happens. It's going to be quite difficult. No. no I think that overlap is too much. Let me just tear that off. like that. And it's turning in the chuck because it's only a screw thread here. missing in there. going to be enough. Let's just feel how loose this is now. That's plenty. I don't think that that's famous last words going to ever shrink onto the 50 millimeter shaft. So the stone spindle is the same piece of steel actually that this was cut off. So I think we're ready to, I've been advised by our friends in Holland not to put this back into the bedstone with epoxy which I might have because that has got no flex in it so I'm going to use uh, epoxy uh, uh, polyurethane glue which has got a little bit of uh, flex on it. <laughs> 